Hello, everyone. Welcome to Social Structure in Latin America. We're going to talk about what happens when the Spaniards come over to Latin America and how they change life and society there. So this is our standards and our objectives. Okay, so I want you to evaluate the impact of major international migrations, both past and present, on the physical and human systems that exist in the areas that this happens in and then i want you to examine the foundations of latin or latino migrations including native populations and their roots in imperialism government programs and free trade so the essential question i want you to be able to answer at the end of this is uh, to what extent did latin american civilizations culture and society change after being introduced to the spanish all right so like how much did their civilizations how much of their culture, how much of their society changed once they were introduced to the Spanish, all right? So once the Spaniards come over, things in America are going to change politically, economically, and socially. And when I say America, we're talking about either North, Central, and South America, okay? So mercantilism is what the Spaniards were really working with, and this is what all the colonizers at the time were working with. Um, so mercantilism is this economic idea that you're going to create colonies. You're going to send people out here. They're going to take land and then they're going to take all the stuff from the land and they're going to send like the raw materials, the, the, the precious metals, the precious gems, the new crops, and they're going to gather that stuff and they're going to send it off to the home country. And then they're going to take the raw materials and they're going to turn that into finished products that they're going to sell around the world, even bring it back to the new world and sell it there. Um, just so that they can make money or that they can sell this stuff to their public um, that they wouldn't be able to get back home without, you know, having established colonies. So really, this is just control of foreign colonies and trade for wealth and security. All right. And what you're going to do, they're going to use the encomienda system. All right. So the crown lends land to Spanish conquistadors. All right. Um, now known as encomienderos. And so they're going to they're going to get this plantation, this big ranch, and they're going to work it, but only they get free labor. They get the natives. So the the French are going to or not the French, but the Spanish are going to use the the natives as slave labor on this land. OK, but also they're going to kind of protect them under their care. Um, and then they're going to convert them to Catholicism. So bringing the religion into it as well. OK. Really, what's going to the Spaniards are going to exploit the land and the people. They did have a one law, though, the Lurgos, that anyone that had more than 50 natives actually had to educate one of the boys in reading and religious doctrine so that he, he was semi educated so that he could teach the others as well. Okay, maybe not so much on the writing part, but definitely on the religious part. Right? They didn't want them to learn the read and write because you got to keep them educated because they're easier to control. All right, one of these, um, Conquistadores was Hernando Alonso, right? He gets his encomienda um, at Octopan, just 62 miles north of Mexico City. He had 8,000 natives working for him. So he's got this huge encomienda, and so he makes a lot of money, and then he kind of expands it into pig and cattle raising, banking, real estate, mining. So he's making a lot of money on this. They had rules of trade. So all raw materials had to be shipped to Spain so that Spain could put them in their factories, turn them into finished products, and then sell them to the rest of the world. Okay, um, Foreign trade and contact was forbidden. You could not trade with other countries straight from the Americas. Everything had to be sent to Spain. You couldn't buy or smuggle from other countries. Okay, If you did, you're going to die. All right, You couldn't move between colonies. You had to stay on the land that you were given. You weren't allowed to move around. The colonies couldn't have factories. We didn't want them mass producing the goods so that they could sell the stuff and become more powerful themselves and self-sufficient on their own. Oh, no, 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 no. Can't have that. Send your stuff back to Spain. All right. They weren't even allowed to use modernized agricultural methods. They had to use older methods um, so that, you know, they didn't get too big. They didn't produce too much and be able to make and establish themselves on their own. And then, of course, if you, you know, you disobeyed this, torture, death, okay, um, slay, the slaves, you know, the indigenous, and then later the Africans, harsh treatments, whippings, floggings, brandings, all right, um, physical torture, physical discipline, like this whipping here, you like whips with like strips of leather, that hurts, but they got these barbs on them, and these barbs have hooks, and they rip into the flesh, and when you rip it off the person, it leaves big gaping holes and rips in the flesh, 
um just very very brutal the way the the spanish um treated the natives very very harshly like if you were to steal something murder or run away you know you had your legs cut off or your hands cut off or you know tortured in physical physical ways um just purely purely inhumane treatment of these people and then they were working in the mines trying to get all this precious gold or iron silver okay um very very dangerous thousands of natives and africans were dying on the daily basis i mean harsh physical work um low oxygen you could die you might be unearthing some gas and it hits a flame you get an explosion you're carrying uh you know heavy materials up these ladders um back breaking labor we're talking about only spanish born citizens could own a store um no one born in the americans even if you had two spanish born parents you could not own a store you could not grow grapes you can't make wine you can't grow tobacco you can't grow olives for olive oil you had to buy all of that from spain so that spain keeps making all this money americans aren't allowed to own mines um, Spain makes equivalent of $1 billion off of selling all these goods to the colonies. So they're in it for the money. And all the taxes the colonies have to pay over to the crown. The crown keeps that and makes it, you know, so that Spain becomes rich and powerful. And at one point, Spain was the most powerful nation in the world. Um, but none of that money went back to the colonies to benefit them in any sort of way. All right, so let's take a look at the social structure. Okay, we're going to have these large plantations, and then they're going to be worked through by the natives. And then once the natives start getting diseases and dying off, they're going to import slaves from Africa into there. The Africans had better immune systems that allowed them to um, not catch those European diseases as easily or not die so quickly from them, okay, or die at all. All right, and so the Spanish sent a lot of men. They did not send a lot of women. So if the men wanted to start families or have children, they kind of needed to intermarry with either the um, natives or the uh, Africans. And this creates kind of a caste system. Here's a hint. If you're born in the Americas, you have limited rights, okay? And they really based this off of pure blood and race, um, in your place of birth. So this was a caste system. If we take a look at their social structure pyramid, on the top was the Peninsulares. They were born in the Iberian Peninsula in Spain. Underneath them with the Crioles. Um, they were born in America. So you have two Spanish parents. Um, they go to America. They have a child. That child is technically a second class citizen. They're still a part of the elite. They just can't own some of this stuff. They can't have a lot of power. Underneath them were the mestizos. These are um, Spanish and Native American uh, people, okay? So these would be people made by the intermarriage there. The, underneath were the mulattoes. These are your European and African descent. Underneath them were just your Africans, whether they were freed or enslaved. And then underneath them were considered Native Americans. All right, so the Peninsulares, they're pure blood, they're from Spain, they're the high social class, they get to hold the high offices in the church, the military, the administration, so they have all the power, and they want to stay loyal to the crown, and the crown gives them all these special treatments so that they will remain um, to remain loyal to the crown and give them what they desire and need. Underneath them are the Creoles, so these are their kids, right? They're land-owning, they're elite, they're well-educated. Um, however, they can't hold these high powers, okay? And eventually, this is all going to boil over in about 300 years. Um, and the Peninsulares are going to lead wars of independence against these uh, Peninsulares, all right? Or the Creoles are going to lead these wars, all right? Because they have no political power, okay? They're treated as lower class, so they're kind of mad. The Peninsulares always answer to the king. The Creoles get, you know less help and less benefits so they're going to revolt underneath them as the mestizos as i said so the spanish and the portuguese men married native women they had families and so the combination of the culture of the races the cultures coming together are mestizos then underneath them would be the mulattoes so these would be spaniards and africans okay and then there was another subgroup that wasn't original in the uh 
pyramid was the Zambos. These are Native American and African. So sometimes like African slaves would run away into um, native tribes or native villages and then they would intermarry with the natives and those are what were called Zambos. And then underneath them were Africans that were brought over from slave or as slaves from Africa. Um, again, as I said, they would sometimes escape, find their way to native villages. Um, they were generally pretty some the natives were pretty sympathetic with the africans because they were all treated very 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 harshly and then underneath the africans were the natives okay um you can see in this picture just how many i mean there's 16 social classes here so they break it down into either smaller parts too <clears throat> all right um you know the step out of line meant torture you know you had to choose between the cross and the sword if you didn't convert to catholicism then they would kill you, okay? Education, um, the Spanish king didn't want printing presses, newspapers, or books available in the colonies. It's easier to control people when they're uneducated, all right? And so people had to get permission from the government just to mail letters, all right? The mestizos did all the manual work. Um, the African slaves could only do um, agriculture or servants, or if they're free, those are the only things they could do on their own. Um, Later on, the encomienda system is replaced with the uh, repartimiento or the lamida. The natives were forced to work for the Spaniards in the mines or on the agricultural fields. And at first, only 5% of the natives were forced to work for Spain. But then Spain justified this as it's necessary for the colonists to survive. They have to kind of enslave these people. Okay, and so the work... Um, the new arrangements were 25% of the indigenous people were given a strict or a given district where they're required to work for the Spaniards, but they get to choose who they want to and like what kind of work they do. All right. Legally, they're only supposed to work for like two weeks, um, but maybe five weeks in the mines or three to four times annually and wages were to be paid for this. However, the Spaniards pretty much ignored this, were really brutal to them and then forced them to work until... Um, they could afford African slaves or the native populations died off. Okay. <clears throat> this is going to bring up some issues. All right. The Roman Catholic Church. Okay. This is the official religion. The natives have to um, convert. They also bring in gender roles. Okay. That are still followed today in Latin America. This is the patriarchal system or society where it's male dominated, right? They're the leaders of the family. They're formally educated. They fully participate in the government, right? The women's roles. They were caregivers. They managed the home. They raised the children. They cared for the elderly. They don't have formal education and they're not allowed to participate in the government. So they are the caregivers, okay? Some people talk about this today. But what this really does is this created deep issues of race, race and racial inequalities. This created a division between the rich and the poor, created a division between the genders. And just, you know, the rich have all the privilege, the, bo the men have all the privilege, um, the Europeans had all the privilege. And so you're going to see some strife and some things that go on. This is what's later going to lead to these wars, all right? Um, one person that sat back and looked at all this stuff and was like, hey, you know, the reason the encomienda system switches is um, a religious priest by the name of Bartolome de la Casas. De la Casas um, was like, yo, you're, you're treating these people really, really bad. He goes to King Charles and he's like, these, these people are treated horribly like you should end this slavery end the encomienda system. He brings in this like really, the king brings in this like really smart intellect to argue against them that it's, it's for the benefit of the natives and the Africans. They're getting a better life than they had before. They're getting food. They're getting shelter. They have work. They're getting skills. Um, but in the end, Bartolome is like, look, if we're, if we're preaching about this Jesus guy and he wanted us to treat everyone equal, what are we doing here? And they kind of were back, sit back and like, well, it's kind of been a little rough. We've been a little harsh to him. So they changed the system. Okay. But as we've talked about, 90% of the native population is going to die from disease, warfare, violence, mistreatment. And so Spain's going to run out of laborers. The solution, as I've talked about before, are going to be 10 million slaves are going to be brought over from Africa. Okay. Um, a lot of the transatlantic slave trade, um, the slaves went to the Caribbean or the South American installments, as you can see, like 
the numbers, the sheer numbers. Um, Jamaica has a million slaves, right? Um, South Brazil, 2.2 million.